Welcome back for part three of Prog GPT, or writing an AI-inspired prog metal piece. In part one, I composed the song. In part two, I set up the DAW and then recorded the guitars. And here in part three, I'm going to mix and master the song and get it ready for release. So if you haven't watched the other parts, go check them out. I think there's some interesting stuff in there. But this part is all about mixing and mastering this song and getting it ready for a proper release. If you watch part two, at the end I played the song, the raw version of the song, basically completely unmixed. All I did was level match some things. But I had it set up like this in there. So what I've done is converted all of the tracks to audio. So most of these are virtual instruments besides the guitars, but I want this to feel like a real performed piece of music with all the instruments. So I've converted everything to audio. There's a couple reasons for that. One is just to save on CPU space. I'm gonna be using a lot of plugins, you know, to mix this song. So having as much CPU power available to me is, is preferable. Also, I wanna be in the mixing mindset when I'm doing this. I don't wanna be going back and tweaking the drum parts or tweaking velocities and certain things. I wanted to make all those decisions beforehand when I was recording and doing all that. So now I just have the performances, they're all laid out and I'm ready to go. So what I did is I set up a whole new session. I exported the stems from the previous session that I set up in the last video and then I got them all laid out here. There's a couple other things to talk about setup wise before I get into the mixing. And what I'm gonna try to do is just set myself up for success. So I've labeled everything properly. It's a big thing. I wanna know where everything is so I can get to it as quickly as possible. And also I've color coded. So all the drums are yellow. And in fact, I have um, the cymbals, the overheads, rooms, hi-hat, ride. That's a different color of yellow. Bass is purple. Rhythm guitars are a darker blue and then different shades of blue for lead guitars and then clean guitars. Percussion is also yellow. It kind of goes along with the drums. Pianos are this pink color. Electric pianos are green. These are like pads and string pads. Those are red. And then down here in these different brown shades is all of my intro stuff, the theremin kind of intro music that I put together. So all of that's gonna make it easier for me to jump around and see what's going on. All of these things are labeled really well so I can get to them when I need them. But the next thing I need to do is set up my buses. It's also worth talking about the order of this. Now, you can kind of do this different ways. For me, I'm gonna kind of go in the order that I'm gonna mix this as far as like how I have it set up. So it's drums first, bass, guitar, and then all of the extra stuff on top of it. You know, the your synth and keyboards and background figures. And that's typically how I do it. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier, I think, from a mixing perspective to have it laid out that way. So that's that. A couple of things about the drums. When I was doing the demo in part two, I was using the Periphery 4 kit or the P4 kit from Get Good Drums. It was just a good one to record along to and I had just a preset going there. Here, I actually am doing like a Frankenstein style kit on the drums. It's a combination of P4 and the Gecko Drums Modern Massive, which is what I use most often. So the shells, kick, snare, and toms, those are Modern and Massive, and then the cymbal sounds are all P4. So it's like a combo. This is what this sounds like, just completely raw. I really like the shell sounds on Modern and Massive. They sound massive as they should uh, but i love the symbol variety that comes from p4 so i kind of frankenstein these two together and it's actually not something i've done before i really like the results so i might start doing this going forward when it comes to program drums uh, i'm not going to do any other samples or anything on this it's not really necessary since this is program drums all the instruments are going to be hit really hard i do lean more on the samples when it comes to live drums if i'm doing live drums obviously uh, or i might bring in like different kinds of samples you know or make my own samples that kind of thing so we can take a look at all the tracks. We got kick, snare top, snare bottom, snare room, toms, three toms, overhead, rooms, hi-hat, and ride. And all these things are gonna be really important. Although the hi-hat and ride, I won't use too much, but I can blend them in if I need them. The room mics are super important. We'll take a look at it when we get into the drums. For the bass, I have a bass DI and then a bass clean. These are both basically DI tracks. One of them is for the heavy bass and one of them is for the clean bass. I got the rhythm guitars lead guitars and, a, and solos, clean guitars. Then I got the percussion. It's a combination of a bunch of different percussion sounds. You can listen. In this case, I didn't explode all those out to individual drums. I totally could have done that, but it's kind of just like adding to the reggae feel. 
in the sections that it's playing. I didn't really think it was necessary to ex explode all those out. I should be able to just automate things up and down within that and it'll be fine. Different piano sounds. Now I went over all this in part two, but this is just a review. Uh, attack piano, which is like a more aggressive piano. The normal piano, right and left hand. Electric piano stabs, electric piano runs, harpsichord, lead synth, staccato strings, which is doing like fast runs. Pad, low pad, which is literally just like three notes. <laughs> Uh, string pad and then all of our intro stuff so we have intro piano lap steel effects frozen cello and then a bunch of theremin sounds so that's the setup here we got what like 40 tracks um, not a huge session so the next thing i have to do is to set up the buses i've got the levels all kind of balanced where i want them to start and so now i can start the actual mixing process so what i want to do is set up all of the buses that these things are going to go into first thing i'm going to do is take the drums and make a drum bus. This is gonna be our master drum bus. And then I'm also gonna do secondary buses here. This is why I color code these things because it helps with some of this process. So these here are the symbols. So that's gonna be a symbol bus that will then go into the drum bus. And then these are all the shells. So I'm gonna make a shell bus. Sometimes if I'm doing live drums, I'll even do smaller buses within that, like I might make a snare drum bus that's just the snare drum, so I can control the volume of that. Usually not necessary for me when it comes to program drums. So we have shell bus, cymbal bus, and drum bus. Now there are a couple of effects sends that I need for the drums. One is gonna be parallel compression, and the other one is gonna be what I'm gonna call a smash comp, which is like an even more aggressive compression, like parallel compression type thing. Um, you'll see what these do once I kind of get into the mixing, but I want to just set them up first. Now, I try to shorten these things as much as possible so I can read all of it in front. So there's parallel compression. Now, the amount of drums that I send to all of these kind of depends on the drum itself. Some of these I will send more to and some I'll send less. So for the snare drum, I've got a couple of reverbs I'm loading in. It's going to be a plate reverb and a gate reverb. And these are going to be very important when it comes to the snare drum. I don't use reverb a ton in mixes in general, but the snare drum is one place that I always do. And what I have is these presets for this kind of stuff. These are things that I can adjust if I need to, but I don't usually change them too much. There's all of my effects sends and buses set up. I just want to keep this nice and organized so I can get around easily when I need to. Now, there's a couple of things I'm going to do right off the bat is load in my bus chains. So what I have is um, effects change that I've saved for, or most instruments anyway, like the ones that take the most amount of time, drums, bass, guitars, and buses. And what I'll do is I'll load those in. I'm going to have them be a default settings, and then I'll mix from there. But it just saves me the time from having to load in, you know, four or five different plugins for each thing, depending on how many I'm using. It's not like a template, or well, it's a template, I guess, for to save me time, but it's not something I've loaded in, and it's just gonna do all the work for me right away. Like I mixed one thing, and then I've mixed every, you know, different song. It's not really how it works. It's more um, that it's just gonna load in all the plugins for me and save me some time. So Drum Bus 2023, um, and I'll turn all those off for now. In fact, I'll probably turn off all these sends just just for the moment, because we're just gonna start raw when we're mixing. And actually, I'll, I'll leave the bus, bus stuff on, because I wanna mix into that. So I should talk about the master bus too, because everything's gonna run into the master bus. So on the master bus, I just have a couple of basic things, and I'm gonna have these on the whole time so everything can run through it as I'm playing. I don't wanna just slap it on at the end, that'll change the way I'm mixing. So if you're doing some stuff on the master bus, it's good to do that first so you can mix into that. You shouldn't be like slapping that on on the end. Now I don't really do the top down mixing thing where I'm doing a ton of work in the buses, but it is important to do some stuff in the buses and to keep it on. So what I have is EQ and you'll find this EQ on a lot of the channels of, of, of this mix. You'll see this SSL channel from Brainworks, this plugin, I love it. Basically I'm gonna treat it like Kind of like running through a channel of an actual console. So I have this up and it gives it a little bit of character and stuff like that. Even if I'm not doing much EQ within this plugin, I'll still slap it on just to add a little bit of character. So what I'm doing here, I'm just doing a high pass at 25 and then a low pass at like 17. Just to kind of get rid of the super lows and highs. And then a little tiny bit of boost on a shelf a boost, another boost on a shelf on the bottom. And then I run this total harmonic distortion up a little bit. 
and that's basically it. Then I have my bus compressor, and you'll see this in a number of places in the mix. With the master bus, I never do it more than like a ratio of two to one. Auto release, slow attack, and then I just set it till you're getting anywhere between two to four dB of compression in the master bus. I don't want to slam the master bus compressor, but I want it to kind of glue everything together. And then last, I have some saturation. So this is the True Iron, which is a really transparent saturation, and I love to use it on buses. 111C, I have full distortion on this, and then I turn the mix down. So I have it fully saturating, and I just move the mix around till I like where it's at. And then on the end, I have two limiters. Now the limiters are just for me to hear what it's gonna sound like after I master it at a louder volume. And also if I'm sending mixes out to clients that are you know hiring me to mix, I'll uh, slap on the limiters, send it to them so they can hear it a little bit louder before they send it to a mastering engineer. But I'm not gonna mix into the limiters. I do not mix into limiters. I'll flip them on at some point to hear what it sounds like to have it the limiters on, but I'm not gonna mix into them, but they're there. So that's my master bus. So what I'm gonna do with the bass is duplicate both of these tracks. Bass heavy, DI, and bass heavy. And I'll explain what I'm doing here when I get to the bass, but I'm just gonna set it up for now. So bass clean DI and bass clean. So basically I'm gonna have a DI signal kind of running alongside the process bass that I'll just blend in for a, a low end boost. And then I'm gonna set up a bus for the basses. Bass bus, rhythm guitars, rhythm guitar bus. I am gonna run all the leads and solos into a lead guitar bus just so I have control over the volumes. And then I'll run these into a clean guitar bus. And then I'm gonna run all of these into a guitar bus. The guitar bus is literally gonna be just for controlling volume if I wanna control the volume of all of the guitars. A lot of the work I'm gonna do on the individual tracks, but the buses allow me to, if I need to, do some EQ work across all the lead guitars, for example. But it's more for like volume automation. So it's like, I wanna bring up or down all of the lead guitars. So instead of like going to each individual track and doing it, I'll go to the lead guitar bus and automate that particular section up. So a lot of this is just gonna save me some time. So I'm gonna make a bus for all of the main keyboard sounds. And then I'll make separate buses, pad bus, it's like strings and pads. I'm gonna say synth bus. This is gonna be the piano bus. And then we have all this intro stuff. It's like intro bus. Then I'm also gonna do a theremin bus. Cause there's a lot of theremin here, you know, at the beginning. All right, so I've turned off all the plugins except for the master bus. I'm just gonna go through the process of mixing this. I'm gonna start with the drums. Start with the kick drum. That's always the first thing I start with. I wanna build the foundation for the mix, the main rhythm instruments, and then I can layer in all the things on top of that. So I do have presets for modern massive kicks. So what I'm gonna do is load that in just so I have all the sounds I'm gonna use here. And I'll turn all them off and go through them one at a time. So here's the kick raw. All right, so a couple of things I wanna do right off the bat we got an EQ. First thing to do is a high pass and low pass. I'm gonna high pass it at about 30. Get rid of the really low frequencies. Same thing, the really extreme top end too. Do a boost at the fundamental for a little bit of power. Now let's listen for any sounds that are kind of popping out. What I like to use Pro-Q 3 for is just finding frequencies I don't like and notching them out. It's a very good for surgical EQ. So take a listen. I hear a little bit of a ringing frequency. And I'm just boosting it that far so I can find the actual note. I'm hearing the do 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 is that note. So what I'll do is then once I have it, I'll take it down. I'm not gonna cut a ton. I don't wanna ruin the character of the drum completely, but. Just took it down a couple dB. Now I'm gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting in the console here. That way I'm not using my eyes so much. So we got the boost of the fundamental. What I need to do is cut out some of that low mids. That's where the guitar and bass are gonna live, especially the guitar. So in probably about usually like 150 to 300 range, um, let's kind of 
boost it and see. It's just going to give a little bit of clarity and allow those guitars to sit in there better. I actually might boost the low and a little bit more too. I'll do a little shelf here. Okay, let's look somewhere between 700 to 900 as our second area. This is another area that can also be kind of boxy sounding. Like that kind of like cardboardy sound. Okay. And then I need to boost a couple frequencies. We're gonna get 8K. That's where it really starts to come to life. Now you can get way too aggressive with this. You know, if I was doing like I don't know, some tech death or something, maybe I'd get like really aggressive with the top end, but. So here's the EQ off. That sounds pretty good to me. We're getting some of that attack. I might need a little more in the two to 4K range just for a little more of a snappy attack. So for the compression on the kick drum, we do a slower attack, fast release. Next thing is some saturation. This is the black box. I love this on drums, it's great. I'm probably gonna do like, turn the saturation knob, not too crazy, but. That gives it some more life. I do like this air knob too for kick. If I want just a little bit more aggression, yeah, if I turn it off, you can feel the power that that's adding. So I turn the saturation up a bit and then turn the mix down. So next we have a clipping. This is another way to just make it kind of pop out in the mix. I love this JST clip from Joey Stir. Just It just has one knob. Perfect. There you go. And then I just have one EQ on the end if I need to kind of deal with any frequencies. Might have a little too much of that high end. I'll know more as I mix it within context, but there's all the plugins for the kick drum. Now let's bring in the parallel compression and the smash compression. I'll talk a little bit about those. So this is something that all the drums are gonna run through. Parallel compression, I'm gonna send mostly shells to, and the smash is gonna be more for the rooms and the cymbals. So I'm gonna take the smash down pretty low as far as how much I'm sending. I'll peep, keep the parallel compression higher in the kick. I'm gonna turn the parallel compression up in the snare drum. is A lot of it's gonna be for the snare drum. Take the smash down for that. And then in the toms, I'll take the parallel compression up a bit, smash compression down. And then all the cymbals, I take the parallel compression down, take the smash up. And then in the snare room, we do more of the smash compression than the parallel compression. Um, now both of these I know are gonna be way too hot at Unity, so I'll take them down. So let's do parallel compression first. Basically what the parallel compression does, I have it set super aggressive, really fast release, slow attack, 10 to one ratio, and it should be doing almost 20 dB of compression. And what this is gonna do is, you're gonna get this slow attack and this fast release. So it's gonna hit it late and release early and it's gonna create this bloom of sound on the end. It kind of fills in the space 
between all the hits add some air and life to the drums you'll hear it even more on the snare drum so i turn it off and on as an effects sin, what I can do is then blend the parallel compression in and out as I need. And then of course I can lessen how much of what instrument I'm sending to it. So I'll kind of be adjusting that as I go along. But some other things I have on this parallel compression chain, I then have decapitator. Just gonna add some saturation to that. And then I have another instance of JST clip on the parallel compression. So I'll turn those off. I might actually be sending too much of the kick drum to that right now. So there's the kick drum. I should also mention the drum bus and the shell bus, which I have on for all of this. Drum bus, I'm just doing a little boost in the bottom and top. Bus compressor just hitting like a couple dB. Another instance of saturation. And then I've got the shell bus too. Similar kind of thing. I just have an EQ if I need it. So shell bus and drum bus. Basically the same thing on both. A little EQ, bus compressor, saturation. So there's the kick drum feeding into all of the buses and the compression. So if I turn everything off for the kick drum itself, here's before and after. All right, snare drum time. So I've got all the buses on here. I'm just gonna go through the snare drum one plug-in at a time, just like I did before. First thing is cutting out some unwanted frequencies. So right off the bat, I hear this ding, ding, ding. There it is. Now you can get way too aggressive with notching out all these frequencies and kind of neuter this character of the drum. So I don't want to do that necessarily, but that's ringing really loud. So I just want to take it down a bit. It's just going to control some of those. So that was the more surgical EQ, that first one. And then here I'm going to do my main EQ. I'm going to boost the fundamental. 700-ish range, that can be kind of boxy-ish. Like that kind of sound. Let's get a little bit of top end, like 8K-ish for like a real snap. You can hear that. And then again in like 2.5. Sounding pretty good. Now let's get the snare compression on here. It's gonna be, once again, a slower attack. And then I've got an instance of decapitator for some saturation. This helps a lot. I say this is pretty bright, so I might take the tone down a bit. And another instance of clip. That's doing a lot. So there's that. Let's bring in the parallel compression. All right, now for some reverb. So here's the plate reverb. It's a little aggressive right now. We can tell it's a really quick sort of like push, release. Now what I'm gonna do is kind of blend this to taste. So I'll, I'll turn the I turn it off. That's doing a ton. Next we have the gated reverb, which is a little bit longer. So that one I'm not gonna have as loud. I'm gonna have the mix down on that. Bring in the kick drum too. Now let's do the snare bottom. I 
Got that crispy top end. Gonna compress it the same, slow attack, fast release. Yeah, a couple of dB. And I'm gonna hit this really hard with Decapitator. Really get that saturation going. Yeah, you can hear that crispy, like sizzle. More clip. And let's run this into the parallel compression. And the reverb. But let's blend that in with the main snare tone. So here's it off, I'll bring it in. So there's kick and snare. Now we've got snare room, which for me is like gonna add a ton of energy to the snare specifically. Here's what this sounds like on its own. I'm focused on getting like a lot of life out of this. None of that really low end stuff. It's a lot more of the high end. And then once again, some more aggressive decapitator. One of the main things with this one is gonna be the smash compression. So let's take a look at the smash compression, uh, which as I mentioned is like the parallel compression, but even more aggressive. So I have some EQ and then basically slamming it all the way completely and really aggressive saturation. <laughs> and you're like, okay, that sounds absolutely ridiculous. But what I'm gonna do with that is blend that into the snare. So here's nothing, and I'll kind of bring in that snare room. And it sounds kind of aggressive soloed out, but in the context of the whole mix, that kind of stuff is gonna make the drums really pop out a ton. Basically, I process the toms the same each tom, but I'm just gonna EQ them a little bit differently. I'm just gonna find a section that has a bunch of toms. This part looks pretty full of toms, some faster fills. I have this gate. I'm just gonna set it pretty low. That way it's not unnatural. I would gate a lot more aggressively with an acoustic kit with the kind of chopping up of the extra sound. Here, I just need to catch it a little bit. Probably don't even really need this at all, but here it is. This is a plugin called Gatey Weighty by Boss Digital Labs. My favorite thing about this is that you can gate specific frequencies. So sometimes I need to do that, especially with live drums. I might need to gate like just the low end out just so I can kind of get rid of some of the bleed. So basically what I'm doing here is cutting out some of the low end with the EQ, a couple mid cuts and a little bit of boost on the top end. Compression, slow attack, fast release. Same sort of deal as the snare and kick. And then Saturn, this is the real trick. I got this from Nolly. Uh, boost the top end with a bunch of gain with this warm tube setting. So off, on. So basically I'm gonna do the exact same processing on each tom. It's gonna be basically the same deal, but different fundamental tone here on the tom too. And then same deal on Tom 3. This EQ needs to go out a little further. All right, let's just listen to this big Tom fill here. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. I might need to balance some of the levels out a little bit, but that's kind of where I'm at. Other thing about the toms is you see I've panned them a certain direction. So uh, you wanna do it drummer view. So tom one is a little bit to the left, tom two is a little bit to the right, and tom three is further to the right. Because I exported these stems, if I was had the VST still running, they would still be panned, but in this case I wanted to pan them so it sounded more like, you know, when you do a tom fill, you're hearing it going down from drummer's perspective.
And those, just like the kick and snare, are running more into parallel compression than they are into the smash compression. What I want to do is take off all the plugins besides the buses on this shell bus, and you'll kind of hear the difference that we've put together already here. So it makes a massive difference. Now I'm gonna have to balance these things out as I go. I can already hear maybe there's too much reverb, but maybe not once I get everything in. So I don't wanna mix too much in solo for each instrument. I'm just kind of doing that to show what's happening. Let's bring in some overhead. Overheads are where I'm gonna get most of my cymbal sound from. First thing I'm gonna do is cut out all that low end. I always find the hi-hat to be extra loud, so sometimes I'll find the hi-hat frequencies and kind of notch them out. This is the preset I had before. As you see all these, it's just kind of little moves I've made here and there. I'm gonna compress these, but not very hard. So the cymbal bus is also the same kind of deal. I'm gonna cut out the low end, boost a little high, and then I got some more saturation. So if I turn off the plugins, just gonna bring some left to that high end. So let's bring in the smash compressor. I'm not gonna do a ton on the overheads with the smash compressor, just kinda kinda use it here and there. Let's blend this in with this shells. The room I'm going to send even more to the smash compression. I've really come to appreciate the importance of room mics recently with drums. Same sort of deal, I'm gonna focus more on that kind of high end. Letting through some of the shells. And this is one of the things I'm gonna blend in. Let's bring in the smash compression. Last thing to bring in here is the close hi-hat and ride mics. The hi-hat's not gonna do much. I'm just gonna reinforce the hi-hat a little bit by bringing it in. Now the ride cymbal, what I wanna do specifically with this ride mic is there's these bells that are happening, especially during some blast beats. I want to really emphasize that high end of the ride cymbal. So I'm gonna cut out all the low end. It's during these blast beats. Um, so let's find that frequency. Yep. We'll cut out the really high stuff. I'm actually going to saturate this a bit too. And then I'll blend that in on this particular section just so I can hear those rides nice and strong. So here's the entire drum mix now. Once again, I might need to go back and kind of process here and there, but I've gone through everything.
let's listen to how it sounded before I did anything to it. So here's how it sounds with no plugins on. And everything on. All right, drums are done, at least for now. I'm gonna to have to adjust as I go along, obviously. All right, so we've done the drums, now it's time to do some bass. I'm gonna start with the heavy bass, just the normal heavy bass tone, then I'll blend in the heavy bass DI, and then I'll do the same thing with the clean bass. So this is just through the bus processing. <laughs> Some EQ, just a high pass filter there, and then a little multi band compression. It's just touching mostly that low end, and then I have it in the upper area too. And then a limiter on the end, which isn't doing almost nothing now. Once I process it, it will just kind of control the very top end. Now I'm gonna to go to the processing of the heavy bass track. If it was a real bass playing, I'd put compression first to even out the performance. In this case, it's virtual bass. It's gonna be played really well. There's no need for me to add a bunch of compression up front. Some of that's gonna happen within Parallax here anyway. So this is Parallax from Neural DSP, which I love for heavy bass, this kind of stuff. I just have this Jakey Bumansky preset that I found that I liked, and then I just adjusted it till it got to the place where I wanted it. Let's take the lows down and highs up a bit. So that's doing most of the work, the parallax. And then EQ, I got a low pass and a high pass. I'm just getting rid of the really bad high stuff, which you don't need on this heavy distorted bass. And then low stuff. I like to low pass around 50-ish. Um, that way, below that, the kick drum can live, and then the bass will take up its space above that. So let's turn on the drums here so we have that. All right, I'm gonna boost some of the fundamental. Scoop out some of this boxiness. Sounds pretty good as is. I need a little more attack, so we can look at around either 1K or 2.5K. It's just helping to have it pop out a little bit more. And some of the low end I can control with the DI. I'll talk about that in a second. Next is Saturn. And what I do with Saturn is some saturation on the top end. Just trying to get that top end to pop out more. Now I don't want to distort it too much. You can very easily over distort bass. Lastly, I'm gonna use Double Tap, which is by Submission Audio, which also does Umansky bass. Um, and what we're gonna do here is really compress it and just control it. I like to get it till it just hits the orange a little bit. Just some volume matching. Cool, so that's in a good place now. I'll kind of adjust that as I go. Let's bring in the DI. So the DI here is focused solely on the low end. So I'm just gonna use this and bring it in to add some low end kind of beef underneath. So on its own. So let's blend this in to the heavy bass. Mm -hmm. 
you can hear how that gives a little extra beef to the bottom end. So let's do that with the drums. adjust the balance as I go along but I'm trying to get a nice balance between these two it's really the foundation of the whole mix let's bring in the clean bass so let's go to the reggae section where the clean bass is happening So for this, because I want it to be much more laid back, I'm definitely not gonna use parallax. I want more of that top end sheen here for this clean bass part, really pop out that reggae sound. Clean bass needs some EQ. I'm gonna do the similar stuff to what I did with the heavy bass. I'm just gonna like focus on getting that top end sheen. Let's saturate the top end just like I did with the heavy bass. And once again, double tap. Let's bring in the DI signal for that. And I'll kind of play with the volumes as I go along, but there's drums and bass. It's time to move to the rhythm guitars. Let's just solo those on their own and see how those sound. First thing I'm going to do is use the Pro Q3 for high pass and low pass, and then any sort of really unwanted frequencies. Now I'm going to high pass up to about 100, getting rid of all that low end stuff. You want to get rid of that top end grossness. Even th those two things make a massive difference. The main thing I'm going to do is cut in the low mids. This is classic heavy guitar stuff. careful to make sure I listen to this in the context of the bass and drums for the most part. I will solo it out so you can hear it, but that's always what you should be doing is listening in the context of the mix instead of just listening to grating heavy distorted guitars like on their own. Just those EQ moves I've made in these two plugins, this is what it sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
Sometimes I'll compress guitars. Let's see how that sounds if I do that here. Often I'll not compress heavy guitars. Multiband compressor is going to control those palm mutes, like in that last section you heard those dun 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 heavy palm mutes. So it's fine as you can see the spikes that happen in the palm mutes there. You can keep more of that bass end of the guitar, but it's not going to become overpowering with those palm mutes. This is a classic trick, everyone does it. I am gonna throw the compressor on here. It's doing like just about a dB at the most. Spending a lot of time on the bass, drums, and rhythm guitar, just because that's such an important part of kind of getting the, the whole mix working well. Uh, I think I might add a little bit of saturation to the guitar specifically so I can get a little more of the pick attack out of it. It actually does a lot, it kind of like gives us some more air on the top. Now I'm going to try to get like just an overall balance between the bass, drums, and rhythm guitars. I'm going to use a little bit of this BX refinement, Rainworks refinement. It's just a harshness control. Get rid of some of the really top end high stuff in the guitar. Last thing I'm going to do is widen it just a little bit. So there's rhythm guitars in there too. Now I'm gonna have to do a lot of automation on the rhythm guitars, especially as I get into the mix and bring in the lead guitars. But we'll kind of leave that there for now. Now let's move on to the lead guitars, which I'm all gonna process probably similarly. So I'm gonna high pass this even farther than I would rhythm guitars, obviously, because we're doing leads. A little bit of a boost in that kind of top end area. We'll see how this kind of fits in once I get it going here. Compression, I always compress lead guitars. Let's kind of see where we're at mix wise with just this EQ and compression. Trying to get it to cut out in the mix. Now I will automate the rhythm guitars down for some of this. Um, in fact, I should probably just take the rhythm guitars just like slightly down anyway, just so that I can kind of hear where it's gonna sit in the mix. So I usually bring the rhythm guitars anywhere between half a dB and a dB down if there's leads or solos. Delay. <laughs>
boosting a lot of top end to get this to cut through. So this refinement at the end is just gonna tame the harshest peaks of that. One thing I'll do is basically the lead guitar is a lead vocal in this particular case. So I'm gonna treat it like a lead vocal and do a ton of automation, bring up certain parts. The very beginning of this melody, for example, is down lower on the guitar. So I'm gonna bring that up and then I'm gonna kind of ride it. Once I get to the automation stage, I'll kind of ride the volume of the lead guitar until it sits really well in the mix. I'll also bring down the rhythm guitars in places too. But I kind of wanna get an overall bass point first and then I'll do the automation later. Rhythm guitars are still a little bit hot. Uh, I don't want to do the classic guitarist thing and just have the guitars be way too loud in general. Sounds really punchy where they're at now, but I'll probably bring the rhythm guitars down, especially in those lead sections. So lead guitar two and three, I'm going to treat these basically the same as the first lead guitar. Now what I am going to do, there's this very last section where there's three harmonies all together. And this is where I'm going to start doing some panning. And we'll talk about panning more when I get to the keyboards and stuff. Obviously the rhythm guitars are hard panned left and right. I'm just gonna do this right away before I even listen to it. See what this last lead guitar kicks in here. Main lead down the middle, main melody. One harm on the left, one on the right. So let's listen to that, just that part. So I'm going to pan this lead guitar left the entire time then. And I'll let the acoustic piano go on the other side, just kind of separating those harmonies out. So let's listen to this. Let's get this first clean guitar in here, which is doing like the reggae stabs. I don't need really any low end at all. And with clean guitars, I definitely want to compress. In fact, I'm going to compress first. Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of saturation on this. Mostly focus on getting that high end really popping out. I'm gonna throw just a tiny bit of delay on that too, just to give it a little bit of width. Single delay, probably timed eighth note. And this is another one that I have doubled with a different instrument. So what I'm gonna do is actually pan this as well. And then I'll pan the piano to the right. So let's go all the way to the left. I actually like that little bit of delay. It's really good. So what I'm gonna do here is actually automate the volume down and automate it to go back to the center. I'm gonna do a lot of automation throughout all of this. It's gonna make a big difference. <laughs> I'm 
Now it's starting to sit in there. As soon as I automate it, you see that it starts to sit into the mix better. The second clean guitar is literally just on the reggae sections. And I'm gonna center this one. Next we're going to do the piano stabs that kind of go along with the reggae thing here. And this happened again later. And here they're opposite the guitar, so I'm going to fully pan this right. Okay, I'm gonna get some saturation on the electric piano stabs there. Just focus on the top end. Let's bring in the acoustic piano stabs. Right off the bat, I'm gonna pan this hard right. I'm trying to leave space in the middle for that lead because everything is so dense. You do a similar thing that I did with like the electric piano and get a lot of top end going here. It's sitting in a good spot. Let's get the normal piano in here. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is solo that with all the rhythm instruments. Might actually use a uh, transient designer on that. Give it even more aggressive attack. This is just something that's gonna blend in. With Just trying to level out where I need that to pop through more. It's very much a background blend in figure. So I just took the whole thing down overall. I think what I want to do actually, since it's a really important part of blending everything together, is just automate the rhythm guitars right now. Just get it done. First thing right off the bat is I know during all this heavy riffing, that's a rhythm guitar feature section. So before the lead guitar kicks back in,
So now I got the rhythm guitars kind of fitting with the lead guitars more. Let's get the rest of the piano in here and then I'm gonna do the percussion. This is just the piano right hand. Kinda going with the melody. Actually, I might do a little saturation. All right, so let's blend that in. <laughs> I want the clip on that too. And then it does the reggae stabs at the end. A little quieter. Okay, let's bring in this percussion that plays during the reggae sections. This is very much a background fill-in figure, and I'm probably not gonna have to do much EQ on it at all. I'd just take out the really low-end stuff. So these little tiny things I'm gonna automate up. Yeah, cool. Let's bring in these runs and stuff during these heavy sections. Um, are these in unison? Electric piano and staccato strings right on this. And then the other ones I'll take left. And then the lead guitar can sit down the middle. where I need to pan all these different synth sounds. Okay, 
let's do the electric piano runs next. That's very much blending in, but that's fine. So these are in harmony, so they need to go to the other side. So harpsichord is left, staccato strings are right. doing some basic automation to the lead guitar now. All right, let's bring in the pads. Now with the pads, I really need to get rid of all that low end information. So here's the strings and pads together. get loud for those first couple hits do, 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 do. and then down a bit after that I think let's check it here Now let's get the solo in here. I'm gonna do a similar thing with the solos that I did with the lead guitar, just let it sit on top. Needs a little bit more top end bite and it needs a little more delay actually. get that first run up since it's in a space and then this part where the rhythm guitars come in with it there's a tendency to have solos be way too loud especially if you're a guitar player so I want it to be sort of the main feature here but I also want it to sit in the mix okay so finding that balance can be tricky Let's go to the solo at the end.
that's all the main instruments. I haven't done any automation on the bass and drums yet. What I want to do is kind of listen. I'm going to listen through my headphones and just make sure that overall levels are sitting in a decent spot. And then I'm going to worry about the intro. Let's do some kick drum automation. Might take this, make this reggae section overall a little quieter. So I'm just fine tuning little things here and there as, as I'm going through. Little automation things, little balance things. So let's do the intro, and I need the intro to be a little quieter overall. And I'm not gonna do too much EQ and stuff in here. These are a lot of kind of specialized sounds. I'm just going to do a lot of volume automation, get everything kind of sitting where I want it volume wise. Let's see where this intro is volume wise. I want it to be a little quieter overall and I can do some of that with the master bus. This is like the main swells, this part, this first swell, I needed it to be like really loud. So we have this weird like crystallized effect. I think I'm gonna have this kind of pan back and forth. I'm just gonna kind of do this at random. So here's our theremin melody. This I need to get way up. Let's see how this theremin melody sits in the later part of the song. This frozen cello is filling out the chords. And have all of these kind of fade out a little bit. Alright, so it's in a pretty good place from a mix standpoint. There's still some stuff I want to do and what I want to do is export it and I'm going to listen to it through my headphones and in my car and on my little Bluetooth headphones and kind of get a feel for it in a number of different situations. But I'm going to master it here first. Uh, so this probably won't be the final mix that you'll hear. I'll come back and tweak this a couple times. You know, I usually do revisions for a couple days, let my ears rest and kind of get an idea of what's gonna happen next. So I'm gonna export this and then I'm gonna put it into mastering and I'll kind of show you how I master a song like this as well. I just loaded in my mastering chain here. I'm just gonna kind of go through each plugin one at a time. So this Brainworks Digital is just gonna be a mono maker making it mono below 60 Hertz. Now let's do some overall EQ here. I'm gonna do a tiny, probably a tiny boost in the bass.
when I'm doing mastering, I'm making very small moves, a DB at the very, very most. Need a little top end sheen. Another low pass and high pass just to catch any unnecessary information. No unnecessary low or high information on any of this. I got this dangerous Bax EQ, which just does kind of like boosts in the top end and the low end. One dB of, of compression at the most. Saturn, I'm just gonna saturate the top end like from 400 hertz up. All of this is very subtle, but it's kind of just bringing certain things to life. Multi-band compression across the board, five different bands, just controlling all the peaks. Notice how it's just barely touching on any of these, but just enough. Another instance of this refinement, just to shave off the really harsh stuff. I'm very subtle with this on mastering. An Oxford inflator, which just gives some beef to it overall. See what this does overall. So turn all those off. All right, let's get our limiters. I'm going to use two limiters here. First is Flatline by Submission Audio, and this is going to do most of the work. And then the Pro L2 afterwards just kind of kind of control things. So I'm shooting for about a max peak of six to seven luffs on this meter here I have in Studio One. Let's set the other limiter on just to kind of check. So I think I've got this in a good place for mastering. I'm gonna do a couple of revisions. I'm already hearing some things I wanna fix once I got in the mastering stage. I need to listen to some other speakers. But what you're gonna hear at the end of this video is the final mastered version of this after I've done a couple of revisions. But this was my process anyway from mixing and mastering this song. Um, I think I've got it in a pretty good place. Took it from an AI idea all the way to a completed finished song. So if you enjoyed this video and this whole series of videos, let me know. I might do some more videos in this vein where it's kind of more loose and I'm just talking and trying to 
kind of figure things out as I go along instead of the more scripted videos. These are fun to do. It's kind of a pain to edit the videos, but I like the process of just kind of showing how I work. So if it's something you like, please let me know. And if you enjoyed this video and all of my other videos, please subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. And I'll see you all for the next video. Until then, stay proggy. Thank you.